So ever since that championship run that Victor had in 2016, you know, I was ready for senior year. You know, I really, I found out that we were playing uh, Aquinas, but it was at their place. And, you know, I've never, I knew where their school was located in Rochester. I knew it was in like a really like, I wouldn't say it's a, well, maybe in my perspective, what I heard, like, I don't, go, I don't go through that area that often, but I just heard it's kind of like a bad part of Rochester. Well, the north part near Sherlock, like, that's okay. Like, that's pretty calm and stuff like that. Like, I've been in the Sherlock area, but just, like, when you start heading past Aquinas and heading south towards Paytech Park, that's where you find trouble. Like, I knew we were going to play them again, and it wasn't until I found out, well, actually, we found out that this kid who played for Athena's football team who went to the States in 2016 as well, but lost to Section 1 Somers. I don't remember if he was from Athena or he went... I don't remember. I think it was Athena. I don't remember. We found out that, oh, he transferred to Aquinas. You know, and like they're saying, oh, Aquinas might be really good and stuff like that. They might be better than they actually were. And I remember during the summer, my dad, I was at a family party or get uh, gathering with my dad's side of family in Syracuse. My dad predicted us getting blown out by Aquinas, the same score from when the Eagles blew out the Giants in 2014. Um, and, you know, and I didn't want to hear, I didn't want to deal with any of the Aquinas cockies, cocky fans and stuff like that. Like, I remember what that bus driver was saying, like, you know, they bring in city kids from the bad part of the city in that school and their parents are teaching the parents who are not from the city you know you're from the you're from the hard part of the city you got to act like a punk and stuff like that not trying to sound you know but that's what i that's what that bus driver said and you know there's a lot of italians and i know how italians are because my dad's side of the family there's a lot of italians yeah i know how that is you know, and I was kind of nervous because, you know, my dad was warning me about, you know, they have a really good player who is a transfer from Greece, Athena. I don't know if that was a school he went to specifically, but he went to another school in Rochester. That's all I could say. You know, I was ready for senior year. Straight up, I was just, I was ready. And I was ready for that first day of practice. And I remember, like... That first day of practice, everyone all came in. Everyone all looked happy to see everyone, which was amazing. Like, I remember walking in. I saw the one person who was the, the team manager who I didn't really get along with at the time smile and wave at me. I'm like, huh? Like, huh? Oh, okay. Maybe he's going to be much nicer, I guess. Um, but yeah, I remember the first practice, you know, we were looking forward, you know, it all started pretty good, you know. I was ready to do fun things with my senior class and stuff like that. Um, you know, I don't remember anything. Uh, I just remember jamming out to music and stuff like that. Um, I just remember I came to practice every day my senior year. I don't think I missed a single practice. Yeah, I don't think I missed a single practice my senior year. I don't remember if I did or not, but, like, <clears throat> I was excited. Um, another memory from practice. This is when I started. This this girl I was crushing on my senior year, the beginning of my senior year. Um, this was someone who... All students believed that I was going to end up having her as a girlfriend. Like, everyone all had high hopes and believed in me. Um, he, it was um, one of the former Victor football coaches. It was uh, his daughter that was a year younger than me. I remember, because she used to do sports at Victor. She was, like, on, like, the swim team, I think. And I, she didn't know the sport, but I don't remember what it was. Um, I remember I saw her running the track with her teammates, and I remember she glanced over at me. I wanted to say hi, but I was too I was too shy at the time. I remember I Snapchatted her. Um, you know, I said, "Oh, I saw you. I was gonna say hi, but I was just a little nervous." And she's like, "Oh, don't be nervous. I'm a nice. I'm a really nice person." And I'm like, "Yeah, I know, because I've I've had you in a bunch of classes." 
and she knows how I was, you know, I was a goofy kid. I always loved to get a good laugh. Sometimes I was crazy, but yeah. And I saw her a few times during my practice, you know, I, I said hi to her and then uh, the, the other girl who I went to junior prom with, she was on the swim team as well, you know, she would sometimes say hi to me too. And I remember the one team manager who I wasn't, wasn't getting along with, I remember he was telling me to do all this stuff. I'm like, I'm like, dude, I have to go. I'm like, he wouldn't let me go. I'm like, dude, yeah, you wasted time. Like, thanks a lot, buddy. Um, it wasn't until this one practice. Um, I remember like he wanted me to get all the condition equipment. He would always bash me and like insult my work, my occupational work pace, work skill, work pace, whatever you want to call it. He always make fun of it. Like first he was like, oh, what do you think you're doing? And then he starts like yelling and bashing me and like how I'm doing things and like, I'm like, you don't you dare throw that R word. You throw the R word, it's done. You're you're done. Like, I don't care if you attack me. I've been hit so many times. Um and like, oh I remember I was really mad about it and I got so mad I was like, I am not gonna be treated like this on my senior year and I threw my hat on the ground. And I walked off the field, and I remember some of the players asked if I was okay. Even some of the coaches asked if I was okay, I remember. And then, the, because, like, the thing was, when he was trying to help me, like, he was telling all the other players who were trying to help me to go away and leave me alone, like, like you know, he was being really rude and not letting others help me and stuff like that. He was, like, making me do it. And I remember one of the players, it was the quarterback, who was a year younger than me, he's like, he's like, I'm going to go talk to him, you're going to stay right here. And he said, he told him, like, Look, I understand you want him to do all this, lifting all these heavy stuff and stuff like that. I get you want him to do all that. But the thing is, he has special needs. You know, he may need a lot of assistance for some things. And like, he was just making excuses saying like, oh, and all that crap and stuff like that. But I remember later that practice, it was pouring rain like crazy. And then I remember they played a Michael Jackson song. And I remember dancing like crazy to the Michael Jackson song. And I remember Coach Mandel was cheering, go Jake! It was, it was fun. Like, I bet that my dance moves made that practice fun. But, you know, it, it was, all I can say is, you know, I was ready for um, more days of practice and the scrimmage against Fairport. <clears throat> and when we finally got the jerseys, yes, we all knew what jersey I wanted. I wanted number 18 which that was my trademark number on the football team. And I remember like there was one day for practice, you know, I almost got in trouble. My parents didn't want me going to practice because I don't know, my dad was saying about, you know, the, the kid they have on Aquinas and stuff like that. And like, you know, I was saying some nasty comments about the area where Aquinas is located. You know, I was saying, I said some things that my uh, family member said, which I'm not going to repeat any of that stuff, but like, my dad was really angry at me and stuff like that, but, um, the fire was not put out yet because at practice, uh, the coaches were getting a little angry and fight stuff as well. Um, I don't know. I was handing a bag or something like that to one of the coaches. He ripped it out of my hand and shoved me out of the way. And I was like, I'm like, what the fuck's your problem, dude? But I, 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 did, I stood my ground. I didn't react or anything i stood up for myself i didn't let it him beat me up and stuff like that i didn't surrender and then the head coach was getting all mad coach mandel was getting all mad because i don't know because one of the plays i remember he looked like he was gonna freaking explode because he looks i can tell like he looked so pissed off he was like god damn it do it again like screaming and i was like holy crap like this dude's ready to like lose his shit and stuff like that like he, i thought his head was gonna explode like in that one horror movie where this guy's head exploded like blood and guts uh, splattered all over the place like i thought that was gonna happen because he was so angry but like oh my gosh it was insane but then everything started to calm down everything started to get better and better and better during the practice and stuff like that and he was saying, like, he realized that, you know, Aquinas is a lot different than they used to be and stuff like that. And, you know, we have to play really good in this game that's coming up because, you know, 
There's a lot of doubters doubting Victor, you know. They're the defending sectional state finalists, you know, and they're doubting us. And we need to show that there's no no way you can doubt us. The scrimmage against Fairport. Well, I was kind of late for for it. I, I got there right when, you know, they were there. They weren't already playing, but, you know, they were all warming up and stuff like that. And I remember, like, excuse me. I remember, like, you know, I was cheering them on. Fairport scored one touchdown, but then we took over. We took over in the scrimmage. And then after the game, we were shaking hands. You know, I was wearing my red Giants hat. Um, and I remember, like, they were, a lot of them were saying, go Giants. A lot of them liked my hat and stuff like that. And, you know, I got to talk with some of the Fairport players and stuff like that. You know, they were very nice and friendly and stuff like that. But I knew that I was excited for my senior year. I was ready. I was counting down the days of my first game of senior year. So game day, you know, I remember I did this one particular dance before games. It was a dubstep dance to the Skrillex song, Cinema. And I remember like, um, one of my friends filmed me dancing to it. And, you know, I used to always blast music so loud, you know, that showed, you know, I was ready. And I remember our first game was like two or three days before, um, before, uh, my first day of my senior year of high school. And when it was time to get on those buses, oh, I was ready. I remember it was not that long of a ride. You know, we had to go up 490, go to the left, you know, go through around Coit, and then we were in like the Sherlock area. And I remember the first time I saw Aquinas, it looked like Union Station, like a train station almost, because it was so big. Like it looked like an old train station. Um, a lot of students say it looks like, some students said it looked like an asylum, an old prison, a mental facility, an old hospital. Whatever you want to name it, you know, they said that's what it looked like. But no matter what, when it was game time, we were ready. So when the game started, you know, I was hoping for a good game, hoping nothing bad happens, like no one gets hurt or anything. I remember we had a really big crowd that game, and I was, I was ready. Like, I couldn't wait to run on that field. I couldn't wait to, you know, shout on the sideline, go crazy and stuff like that. And it started off okay with Victor. Like, we scored a few touchdowns and stuff like that. And Aquinas punted or blocked one of our punts. And that one kid who I believe was from Athena, he threw a, he caught one of our pick sixes. He intercepted it and ran it back. And the game was tied until we finally got the game-winning touchdown was to Mike Nowitzki, who now plays football for UB. That touchdown was probably one of the best touchdowns I've ever seen. It kind of reminds me of uh, the Plaxico Burris touchdown in Super Bowl 42 when the Giants played the undefeated New England Patriots. But Victor came out on top in this one in a pretty tight, pretty good game, actually. This was probably one of the best games so far, in my opinion, and a really good start to my senior year. So, for week two, we were going to play Gates Chi Lai. And the last time we played Gates Chi Lai was on the JV team I was on. Yeah, we played over at Gates Charlie on their grass field they used to have. Um, I remember, like what they did, um, my first year on varsity, you know, we would say, you know, the fuck team opponent on three. We did that against Aquinas, and that one I, I shouted, in the ass, like what I did in the 
fair one. And every single one I shouted in the ass my senior year. Um, the Gates one, like, I remember, like, you know, one of them said, like, there once was a player on Victor named Ryan Flights who used to say, I fucking hate Gates. Let me tell you, I fucking hate Gates, too. I remember I said, under my breath, Gates is a ghetto school, and they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And then, we, you know, we did fuck Gates on 3 one 2 3 fuck Gates, and then I said my line in the ass. Um, I remember we went to the team dinner at my friend's house. Um, it was my friend Nico. He had, like, a, it was like a new house, I think. It was really cool. It had this gorgeous view, and it had, like, the pool and shit like that, like, this house, this back, that backyard was lit as hell. Like that, I love the fucking view it had. It had like a gorgeous ass view. Like, damn, I wish I had a view like that in my backyard. That'd be lit. When I saw the pool, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm definitely splashing in it. I'm full sending it. I don't care what others say. And I remember they had like floating bean bags. I remember I was posing funny and they're like, yo, take some pics of this and send it to some girls and stuff like that. And like, I don't know, and they're like flipping me over on the beanbag and stuff like that. Yeah, it was, it was fun. You know, that was a really good team dinner. It wasn't until at the end of the team dinner, I finally admitted who I'm crushing on. And then I said it was, um, former varsity coach's daughter, the former, the former varsity coach of Victor, his daughter, who was a year younger than me. You know, they're all making fun of me like, oh, you know that her father's the former varsity football coach and stuff like that. And I was like, yeah, well, because, you know, she's really nice and like, you know, she helps out with like people with my disabilities and, you know, she seems really understanding and she seems like she understands me. So I think we'd be great and stuff like that. And, you know, they're kind of joking around and stuff like that. And I remember on the bus ride on the way there, they were kind of shouting her name and stuff like that to get my reaction, but it didn't bother me. It didn't bother me one bit, you know. I knew they were trying to bust my balls and stuff like that, but yeah. No matter what, I was ready for the game. Game against Gates was really good. You know, our offense and defense did an excellent job, and it was, um, there's nothing really else I can say besides... We blew them out. That's all I can say. But, like, um, we actually, as a visiting team, we had a lot of Victor fans in this game that made the trip all the way to the other side of Rochester to watch us play. But, like, they had some good songs that they played. Um, they played a few Eminem songs that I like, um, which really made me happy and stuff like that. Um, they also played some of those songs that they played in the JV game that one of the coaches yelled at for us dancing to. I remember I was dancing to them, and I remember some of the players saw me. My best friend who was on the team saw me, and, like, they're all laughing. The whole Victor crowd was cheering for me and stuff like that. I remember during halftime, my dad and my mom and dad comes up to me, and they're like, I'm like, don't do that. You look like such an idiot and stuff like that. But I thought, you know... I was having fun. That's the good thing. And Victor had a pretty good game, pretty good game, pretty good win, and we were ready for week three. Week three, Rush Henrietta. I remember it was a really hot day that day. I remember it was like 70 something degrees, like, man, like, I don't know how Rush Henrietta dealt with wearing black jerseys like that and heat like that, but man, like, that's got to be crazy for them. It was a pretty good game. I was mad at one of my teammates because, I don't know, he said something, but, you know, I decided I calmed down and and I started to be nice to him after that because, you know, I could tell that, you know, I felt bad for being mean to him and stuff like that. But the game was pretty fun. Uh, Rush Henrietta scored at the end of the game, which was kind of weird. It was weird because after when they scored, they were playing music and their fans were dancing. I'm like, uh, you're late to the party, my friend. But anyway, after a big win against Rush Henrietta, we were ready to play a familiar face and who is also a crosstown rival. So then there was the game. 
against, you knew it, Pittsford. I remember after the game against Rush Henrietta, one of the coaches, when they were talking about how he did during the game, one of the coaches walked up, straight up just said, I hate Pittsford, and walked off. And we were all like, ooh, and stuff like that. And I was ready for the game. And I remember there was this one, like, substitute teacher we had. She was really weird. She kept on saying no to every single thing. It was just like the talking con shell from that SpongeBob episode. Um, she was like, oh, I hope they, I hope Victor does the best they could because they're supposed to be extremely, extremely solid this year. I'm like, yeah, I'll show you solid. Um, but then when that Friday came, I was ready. So then there was the game against, you knew it, Pittsburgh. I remember after the game against Rush Henrietta, one of the coaches, when they were talking about how he did during the game, one of the coaches walked up, straight up just said, I hate Pittsburgh, and walked off. And we were all like, ooh, and stuff like that. And I was ready for the game. And I remember there was this one like substitute teacher we had, she was really weird. She kept on saying no to every single thing. It was just like the talking con shell from that SpongeBob episode. Um, she was like, oh, I hope they, I hope Victor does the best they could because they're supposed to be extremely, extremely solid this year. I'm like, yeah, I'll show you solid. Um, but then when that Friday came, I was ready. And I remember that crowd at that Pittsburgh game was big. Like, we had the student section right next to the end zone. And here are a few pictures of me with the student section. You know, I was really hyping up the student section like crazy. I was ready for this game. You know, I was being loud, crazy, and all that stuff. And um, Pittsburgh scored, like, I think two touchdowns or one I don't remember and I thought oh we're gonna come back because when we played them last year we came back and crushed them real good but you know something was just not right like I felt like we were kind of like struggling and stuff like that or they outsmarted us or outplayed us I don't know but like I remember going into halftime and like I remember I was just sitting on the bench breathing rapidly the one of the team managers it was the one named Zach he came up to me he's like are you okay and then we came back for the fourth quarter and it just it was not that great it wasn't really good I remember after the Pittsburgh game I remember I was crying after the game I was like really crying hysterically because you know I was sad because you know, I was looking forward to this game and just it just didn't go the way I wanted to go. You know, I was having a great week and then that just ruined it. I remember the coaches were asking if I was okay and, you know, I was upset about it. And I remember one of the players said something and I got mad. And then I had to sit down on the bench and, like, one of the other coaches were talking to me and he said, like, I understand how you feel, but let me tell you something. We're going to see this team again, and I promise you. And I remember, like, Coach Mandel, Coach Mandel was talking, like, you know, he said, like, you know, this is probably something we weren't expecting and stuff like that, you know. You know, we're not going to blame it on anyone, you know. All the, the whole best that happened, that was me. You know, it's not the end of the world. It's not like something bad's going to happen the next day. It's just we're going to learn from this mistake. And then that was it. Um, I remember... Um, next, 
the next week was homecoming, I remember. And I remember like there was one practice where it was like raining, you know, during homecoming we would have like all the fun events throughout the week and stuff like that. Like I would participate, I wouldn't participate, but I would watch them and you know, I'd always be jamming out to my music and stuff like that. It wasn't until one of the practices, it was pouring rain, I was jamming to music and I remember like the, the football players were making fun of the one girl I liked who was the daughter of, a, of the former football coach at Victor. Um, I remember like they were making fun of me and then they were legit doing this during practice. There, thank God there are no coaches around because trust me, the coaches would probably yell at every, would yell at everyone. They're all jumping around me chanting, Rosa fuck the coach's daughter, Rosa fuck the coach's daughter. I was getting so annoyed and shit like that. Um, I remember they also introduced some JV players who actually, um, they were like one of the best JV players for Victor that year and like, it was like kind of like, uh, what was it? Lucky Charms. Like, you know, those were the good pieces and they left all the bad on the JV. The quarterback, like, you know, I saw what he looked like. And I remember the, he was a younger kid, like three years younger than me. I remember I saw his blonde looking hair. I'm like, oh my gosh, he looks like uh, Michael Flatley from Riverdance. Cause it, you know, he had that really long, like wavy like hair, blondish hair. And I remember coach, went on a massive rant during timeout because of the Pittsburgh game. He said, you wanna know why we lost? Because I heard so many fucking excuses during huddle. I was hearing, oh, they had all these plays that we didn't know they were gonna do and all that. And he's like, guess what? I don't care. I don't care about, and he, was like, and he was saying things like, just because we're victor, that doesn't mean we can beat anyone, you know? And he was just, I don't remember everything. I just remember he said like, I heard so many fucking excuses like, you know, they had all these plays that we didn't, that you, you said they did, they had, but they didn't actually have that. They had all these weird plays that we didn't even, that they didn't have in the huddle and stuff like that. And he's like, it's just because, you know, we, we beat them last year and we're victor. That doesn't mean that we beat them all the time. And I remember, um, I remember the day before, um, the homecoming game against Webster Schrader, um, they moved... Um, the homecoming game to Saturday, which I don't know why they did that on my senior year, but I remember like Coach Mandel was saying this, and this is a quote he would say for like a team who beats Victor for the for the first time in like school history or something like that. I don't know. It's like he said, you know, you guys better turn this game, you better turn it around for homecoming. You guys better. This should be a must win because you saw how Pittsburgh's fans and players were acting like after the game. You know, like, you know, they're jumping on the Victor logo, logo, the bus was honking the horn when they were leaving, you know. They were acting like Christmas just came early and they got what they wanted for Christmas, you know. And he was saying, if we lose to Schrader on homecoming, they're going to act like Christmas came early too. So we better turn it around. So then, we had another game. It was an away game against Churchville Chilai. But the thing was, it was on a neutral site because the grass field that they played on, the last time we played them, was being made into a turf field. So we were gonna be playing Churchville at the Brockport College Stadium. I thought to myself like, Oh, it's gonna be fun, like, you know, it's gonna be a good long journey and stuff like that, but I think I'm gonna have fun. Although it was a pretty long ride all the way to Brockport, but still, it was a fun game. Like, our offense and defense did a pretty good job. Um, the Churchville student section and fans, oh, they were booing us really bad when we got out, but, you know, I knew that that couldn't bother us one bit. Churchville did try to score a touchdown, but... The wide receiver dropped it, and I shouted, yeah, you better get mad, and stuff like that. Um, 
I remember after the game, you know, Coach was calling us the pirate ship team or something like that. I don't know what he meant by that, but, like, he's like, oh, we're going to set sail. And I, because I'm a U.S. Navy fan, you know, I thought, like, you know, we're going to be like a battleship. But anyway, Victor came out on top, and I knew what next week was going to be. It was senior night for my senior class. The week of senior night. You know, I was really excited. Um, I remember the day before the senior night game, I remember when coach was talking, I remember he gave me a shout out. He said, you know, Jake Rosser, he says he wants to have a group photo with his senior teammates and stuff like that. And I remember all the players started cheering and stuff like that. And right when I heard coach give me a shout out. I was really ready. Oh, here's a picture of me with Andrew Russell, Mike Nowitzki, Coach Mick, and Coach Mendel. And here's a picture with my mom and dad on senior night. Besides that, here's the game. The game was really good. Um, our offense and defense did really good. Um, I also scripted a line from Vine called, He Needs Some Milk, when this Webster Thomas kid got hit really hard. The whole student section heard it, and they were laughing hysterically. But yeah, it was a really good game. Sadly, my friend Steve, who was one of the really good running backs, he unexpectedly got hurt in this game, which was kind of sad, but... That didn't bother us at all, because we knew what our plan was after that. So then, there was sectionals. And I was thinking to myself, who would we play the first round? Um, you know, I was thinking of a few schools. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> but it wasn't until I checked the news, we were playing a school from the RCSD, Rochester City School District, called Edison Tech. And they were in a huge sectional drought the last time they appeared in sectionals at the time was like, I think either 2003 or 2004. I don't remember specifically, but you know, like I knew like they were somewhat good. Like, you know, they had a big blow. They blew out gates in their first game. And they were like, I think the only teams they lost to were McQuaid, uh, Wilson. No, no, they beat Wilson. No, they, I think they lost to Wilson. I don't remember, but like, they have an average, like, I think they're like three wins, three losses or something like that, or three wins and two losses. I don't remember, to be honest, what their record was, but I knew that, you know, I was ready for that sectional game for my senior year. The game against Edison Tech was actually really, really fun, you know. It was the last game with my 2018 squad. And I remember, like, the offense, the defense was doing great. And, you know, I was kind of nervous because I did hear that Edison's players were actually somewhat good. But, well, Edison was probably still partying like it was 2003 or 2004. I don't remember what year was the last time they appeared in the sectionals since this happened. But we partied like we were class of 2018. And that's what we did. And Edison Tech only scored one touchdown, which was right at the end of the game. And next stop was Brockport College. And we knew who we were going to be playing next. But we had to be prepared because something was a little different about them. So, the second round of sectionals at Brockport College was against the one and only Aquinas, the Little Irish. <clears throat> so that kid who was a transfer, who I believe was from Athena, Greece Athena, I don't remember what school he was from specifically. Um, I remember like, um, I don't know if he either went to Athena or Brighton, I don't remember, or some school in Rochester, I don't remember. 
I don't think he played in the first game. I probably made that mistake and said he did, but I'm starting to remember, yeah, he did not. Um, I remember, like, you know, we were all nervous because, you know, he was going to be in that game, and, you know, and, like, so many people were doubting Victor, you know, because they lost to Pittsburgh. Everyone that year was saying the double-A final is going to be Aquinas and Pittsburgh. Like, you know, they they thought, like, you know, Victor's not who they were the year before and stuff like that. You know, that they're doubting us. Another thing that happened that week, I don't, I, oh, this probably did happen, I feel like. Um, <clears throat> I was hanging around in the trainer's room. Uh, the athletic trainer we had, he was like this Latino or I don't even know what he was. Latino, like something like Hispanic. I don't know what he was. Um... He's a chill guy, but, like, I remember I was talking about, um, I don't know, this one girl or something like that who went to Aquinas while I was crushing on, and I found out she had a boyfriend who was a kid on the football and lacrosse team who got cut. Probably because of doing dope and drugs and shit like that. But I thought to myself, because he was, like, a SoundCloud rapper, like, oh, if I got into a rap battle... Um, I was thinking of the one quote from 8 Mile when Eminem was rapping with, at the food truck. And he said, Why are you hanging with a gay guy, G? You're more likely to get an HIV. Like, he said that. I remember I said I was going to say the same thing, but I made my own version. My own version was, Yo, motherfucker, you're gay as can be. Boy, you're going to get a fucking HIV. Um, I remember I said that. And, like, the athletic trainer was heard it the dude was like freaking out at me he's like get it, get, it, get out i can't believe you did it. like like i get it yes what i said was kind of wrong and yes i kind of knew that was going to be a bad choice on doing that in his room office thing but like he didn't have to overreact about it like yes i did find out that he was having a bad week and what i said probably was the load that broke the camel's back like he wasn't mad at me personally but like you know i get it you were mad well you were having a rough day and you know what i said was probably wrong and yes i kind of knew it was a bad choice but he didn't have to overreact about it i don't know that day he was really cranky like i don't know i asked the questions like oh it's not my problem you worry about your problems i worry about my problems and he told me he beat it punk or something like that like, I, I actually regretted saying that. Like, you know, I didn't think he was going to react that way, but I don't know. Maybe he just reacted the hard way. I don't know. But, like, I remember the day before Aquinas when we were playing them, uh, you know, the coaches were talking. I remember one of the coaches were saying, did you guys hear when they were going through the line shaking hands from week one? You know, they're saying, see you guys in sectionals, see you guys in sectionals, see you guys in sectionals. You know, they're talking all that mad shit. When we play them, um, we better, um, we better, what was I going to say? He said, in that game tomorrow, if we come out on top, trust me, they're going to regret saying that. But, you know, when it was game time, the next day, I was ready. The game started on this cold, pouring night. Um, the game started off somewhat good, like Victor did okay, but, you know, that kid from Aquinas pulled off a Brian Westbrook, like what he, like what he did against the Eagles or against the Giants. My bad. Um, one of the football players on Victor, I don't know, was mad and he snapped at me. He's like, "Hello, are you fucking deaf? They said water. Do you know what you're supposed to do?" And I remember I was so mad at him because I didn't like how he snapped at me. I yelled back in his face, like, "I'm like, well, what the fuck does it look like I have? Do I have eight arms? Well, I don't. God damn it, you know." This game was really embarrassing, especially because, you know, it was my last year with the boys I grew up going to school with, and, you know, it was just... The Victor crowd was so dead silent, like, we couldn't hear anything, and the Aquinas fans were just being all loud, rowdy, and into it. And at the end of the game, you know, they were saying, like, you know, the hey, 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 goodbye, and they were even saying, bye, Felicia, because that was a thing. You know, it was really sad. I remember, like... I was so embarrassed about this game that I felt like so depressed the last few weeks after this game. It was just, it was terrible. You know, like, these are all like,
boys I grew up going to school with, like starting all the way from like kindergarten. You know, I was really sad about this. I remember crying after the game. And I remember in the huddle, Coach Mandel said, you know, that's a team that you have to be careful with what you wish for when you play them. Like, yes, we beat them last year. We beat them week one. Like, you know, just be careful with what you wish for because, you know, anything could change. And, yes, you know, it was really sad that it had to end this way, but, you know, I was proud of all the memories that me and my 2018 squad did. You know, I grew up with these boys, you know. I remember when these boys were young playing on the Little League football teams and stuff like that, even though I wasn't into sports that much like how I am now. But, you know, it's just... It was a really sad ending. It wasn't really the ending that we wanted, but, you know, at least we were a part of it. If someone ever asked me, what was the most embarrassing game you were ever a part of in football? I would say the game against Pittsburgh when we lost to them, and especially my last game with my senior class against the Corners. You know, it was really sad, you know, just, you know, can't do anything about it, you know, it is what it is, and I remember during the meeting, you know, about the season, you know, coach was saying, you know, they are saying that Victor is not who they used to be, and I planned, you know, I want to come back and help out with the football team, Z Money did that after when he graduated, he came back to help out, so, I'm going to do the same too. But, you know, I just have to finish up my senior year. And, you know, I was ready for the next chapter after graduating in 2018. But, you know, sad that it had to end this way. But, you know, at least I got to be a part of it.